Is it possible to go to Jesus for the wrong reasons? So Annie Ma, who uh, worked at our office for years, she's given me permission to share that um, she became Catholic two decades ago to get her daughter into St. Paul's Elementary School and then into LFA, Little Flower Academy. Um, there's this famous leader in archdiocese, his name is Eric Chow. He has told the story about how when he was a young adult, he was at this Catholic event and he saw this beautiful girl. So he went up to the statue of the Blessed Virgin Mary and he fake prayed to show her how Catholic he was. So this idea of going to Jesus for the wrong reasons, it's, it, it's quite common. So we might go to Mass to please our mother. We might choose our parish based on what we can get out of it, rather than also thinking, well, what can I give? Maybe most of our prayers revolve around asking Jesus for things rather than thanking him. And I'll admit in the past that I, I've used Jesus because he would make my life, I would use him to make my life better. So it's not good. So there are negative uh, reasons to go to Jesus. There are just all what we'd call purely human reasons, which aren't negative. But both of them have to improve. Jesus is very merciful. Jesus loves us. And it's typical that we will start our spiritual journey with mixed motives. But they can improve and they should. So Jesus says today, very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. So the context here is that Jesus had been doing many healings. And so this crowd of 5,000 people, they gather around him and they follow him towards this remote mountain. And there he does a miracle for them. He does a miracle. He feeds all of them. And it says, actually, if you ever read it, it says they were going to take him by force to make him their king. And then when Jesus realizes this, he actually escapes. He goes uh, to the mountain by himself for a day, they go looking for him. And when they find him, this is what Jesus says. Very truly, I tell you, which in the original Greek is amen, amen, I tell you. That's a very specific phrase that only Jesus uses. And whenever he uses it, it's basically this. Wake up, listen. What I'm about to tell you is something that God the Father will confirm. And what he's saying is, you're coming to me for the wrong reasons. So one thing he does is he points out that word there, signs. The word signs in St. John's, John's Gospel is used 17 times. And a sign in that Gospel means that Jesus does something to reveal his glory, to reveal his divinity. And the point of the sign is so that people will believe in him. And that's what he really wants. So Anima, uh, she became Catholic, you would say, for the wrong reason. But then she started taking Jesus' words very seriously. And now she's becoming an amazing disciple. Eric Chow, he, he saw that beautiful girl and he went up to her and he used a Catholic pickup line. And he said to her, I was reading the book of Numbers and I realized I don't have yours. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. He said, it's Palm Sunday, can I hold yours? No, so the key, the key is to go to Jesus, not for what he gives us. The key is to go to him for who he is. So Jesus says, do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. You can see that this is from John chapter 6. So today and for the next three Sundays, we're going to hear from John chapter 6. And what's really interesting is, is in this dialogue, there will be six times when the people will interject or they'll ask Jesus a question. And each time, what he'll try to do is try to reveal something deeper. He's going to try and teach them so that their faith deepens. Now today, they ask him this question. What must we do to perform the works of God? That's a good question. That's a question we could all ask. Like, what, what do I have to do? What does God want of me? Jesus answered them, this is the work of God, that you, what? Very good. Very good. Thank you. 
Because so many people, when they say, well, I know what Jesus wants me to do. I want him to, yeah, he wants me to be a good person. No, no, no. We've talked about that so many times. He does not want us to be a nice person. Being a nice person is way too low a standard. Nice people do not make the world better. As you said correctly, he wants us to believe in him because when you really believe in him, then you become like him. That's the best thing that can happen. So we are now in August. We're halfway through what we call here our Sabbath summer. So hopefully most of us are in a more relaxed state. And we just want to ponder, what must we do to perform the works of God? In other words, what does Jesus want of us? I want to give you four suggestions. Number one, in four months, on November 24th, we're going to have our Christ the King Challenge, as we do every year. So I'm going to ask you three questions. Put up your hand if you've made Jesus the center of your life. And as we've said, this is the relationship diagram. Ultimately, there are three ways we can relate to Jesus. Either he's outside of our life, a part of our life, or he's the center. The second question I'll ask you is, have you made this decision in the past 12 months? And then if he's not the center, do you want him to be? So you want to start thinking, what will you answer? So this is a great opportunity. And every year is a chance to grow in faith. So this fall, we're going to have Alpha. And then we'll have faith studies and journey through scripture. All incredible opportunities to grow spiritually. Second, let's praise God. We mentioned three weeks ago that the city of Vancouver gave us the development permit for our parish center. So as I've said, we want to spend more time thanking God and not just asking him for things. So let's say a prayer as we said three weeks ago together. Heavenly Father, we give you all praise and glory. We have learned through these years that without you, we can do nothing. You know our great need for a parish center in order that we can fulfill your mission of making disciples for Christ. Thank you for granting us the city's approval of our application. More importantly, thank you for granting us every spiritual blessing through Christ and the Holy Spirit. And thank you, Mother Mary, for your prayers. Amen. And I want to thank all of you for your amazing support of our spiritual project, the building of the parish center. Uh, either next week or the week after, we'll give you an update on where we're going. Third, uh, the year 2025 is going to be the 100th anniversary of our parish family. So I want to suggest something to you. What about uh, delaying uh, the anniversary by one year? We'll use all of 2025 to prepare our hearts, to prepare how we can grow and then we celebrate in 2026 in the new parish center. So I'm going to put that forward to you, delay the celebration for one year, and then think, how can we even grow? Like, where does the Lord want us to grow for the next 100 years? So something to pray about, talk to each other. We'd love to hear your feedback on that. And fourth, in 2026, we want to relaunch the Adoration Chapel. So... In 2019, we renovated the chapel. We have one of the most beautiful chapels anywhere. And 307 people at that time signed up for weekly adoration. Since then, the participation has fallen off. So what about in 2026, if we renew our commitment? Wouldn't it be amazing if, let's say, uh, 500 of us signed up for weekly adoration? Our official count is exactly 1,000 people here every Sunday. So wouldn't it be neat if half of us said, I'm going to do adoration with Jesus, towards Jesus, once a week. So maybe we could use all of 2025 to prepare ourselves to really live out this commitment for the rest of our lives. We can pray about that. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. 
So Jesus is the bread of life. The Eucharist is the bread of life. Let's not go to Jesus for what he gives us. Let's go to him for the right reasons for who he is.